Hello everyone. Isn't this just a beautiful day? Oh my goodness, the sky is just amazingly blue with white puffy clouds going through it. And it's only in the 60s here. It is really nice. It's like 68, 67 in between there, so it's it's not cold at all. But there is this beautiful breeze that's coming by, and it is the perfect day for a work day. So I decided that that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to take advantage of it before the humidity goes up and the heat goes up. And yeah, it just takes everything within me in order to complete a task. So. I will show you what I plan on doing today, and I hope that you will want to join me. And I will talk to you all in just a couple minutes. Okay, before I go on and I show you what I want to do, I do want to explain to you kind of what it is that I want to do, right? <laughs> Anyways, ever since I started doing this YouTube video stuff, and I have slowly over the months accumulated stuff specifically for me to be able to do videos, right? I have my stuff for my GoPro, I have this for my camera, I have a couple tripods, and then I have all my stuff that I have purchased in order to make things like shea butter and uh, vegetable glycerin and my um, dandelion infused oils that I've made and all these different products that I have. <sighs> That being said, they're like scattered everywhere. Yeah, I even have a box sitting on one of my dining room chairs. So I'd really like to get it organized. And I was thinking when I went to bed last night that, you know what? I have something that I can use that I am not utilizing well at all. And I wanna show you what that is because actually it's quite special. So. Let's go take a look and you'll have to excuse the mess in that bedroom because yeah, there's empty boxes everywhere. I have been collecting empty boxes for when we move. Anyways, I'll show it to you. Now I do want to say that for me, this is really opening up who I am as a person to all of you because I normally, I would not show this kind of a mess to anybody. And yeah, here I am putting it out on YouTube. But as you can see, there is empty boxes all over the place. That there is my stuff that I use for my cards. And I kind of keep it in that basket because then I can, wherever I happen to want to be doing them, if I'm sitting on the couch or I'm sitting in the recliner, if I'm sitting at the table, then I can just kind of like pick that up and take that with me. But you see this cabinet here. This cabinet was my grandfather's. He made that cabinet. It's actually in two pieces, top and bottom. And my mother had willed it to my one son, the one that's going to have a baby. And he has left it here because he has no room for it. So I put it in this room thinking that, okay, well, you know, when he needs it, he'll come and get it. Well, yeah, that's been like three years ago. And so this is not being utilized at all. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to utilize it because there's so much stuff that I need to be able to put away. And I have this space behind me. This is my hallway. It's really just a square, but it's quite large. It's like 10 by 10. And so right now, that is the spare bathroom and that, and yeah, there it is. There's my living room. So if you pan around here, like I said, there's my bathroom. That is the master bedroom that, yeah, my husband is sleeping right now, so shh. And then if you pan around behind me, there is the messy study. Yeah, really needs looked at. But oh well, that's for another day. But presently what I have is I have just a chest sitting on the floor there. 
And all those pictures happen to be wedding pictures of my family, from my mother to me and my husband to my kids. So I thought that if I moved that chest, I could take the pictures off the wall, put that double chested right here, and then I could just figure out where those pictures will go on either side of it. So anyways, I think that is what I'm going to do. So hey, we'll see how that goes. And I will show you when I get that drudge out of that room. Okay, I was able to quietly get these pieces moved out here. And let me tell you, that wasn't easy. I'm like huffing and puffing. Anyways, I'll keep on working on this. Okay, finally got it together. And yeah, my heart is pounding and I have sweat on my brow. And there it is all done. I think it turned out pretty nice. Wasn't really sure how to put those pictures that I had grouped. That was kind of the best I could come up with. But anyways, I thought it might help keep me a little better organized. And I'll show you the inside. In the top part, I have my ribbons and some pine cones. And those are all like um, selfie sticks and tripods. And then in this area here is all my stuff for my GoPro and all the little accessories that come with that. And then on this shelf there, that is ribbons. And then some of the bottles that I've been collecting and the two that I purchased. And then down here is where I have decided to put at least, it's not really organized quite the way I want it, but yeah. I think that I'm on my way to some real organization. Question. Do you like the picture of my mom on the left there at the top? Or do you like the picture of my mom in the middle with the horseshoe above it? Please let me know. For today's devotion, I will be reading from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. I want to tell a story today about a man named Robert Robertson. Well, one Sunday morning in 18th century London, Robert Robertson was walking along the street where there were many people hurrying to church. Robertson was a lonely man. The sound of church bells reminded him of years past when his faith in God was strong and the church was an integral part of his life. It had been years since he had set foot in a church, years of wandering, disillusionment, and gradual withdrawal from the God that he had once loved. That love for God, once fiery and passionate, had slowly burned out within him, leaving him dark and cold on the inside. Robertson heard a horse-drawn cab approaching him and he turned and he lifted his hand to hail the driver. But when he saw that the cab was occupied by a young woman dressed for the Lord's Day, he waved the driver on, but the woman of the carriage ordered that the carriage be stopped. Sir, she said, I'd be happy to share this carriage with you. Are you going to church? Robertson was about to decline, then he paused. Yes, he said at last, I'm going to church. He stepped into the carriage and sat down beside the young woman. As the carriage rolled to forward, Robert Robertson and the woman exchanged introductions, and there was a flash of recognition in her eyes when he stated his name. 
That's an interesting coincidence, she said, and she reached into her purse and withdraw, withdrew a small book of inspirational verses. She opened it to where there was a ribbon bookmark at a verse. She handed the book to him and said, I was just reading a verse by a poet named Robert Robertson. Could it be? He took the book, nodding. Yes, I wrote those words years ago. Oh, how wonderful, she exclaimed. Imagine I am sharing a carriage with the author of those very lines. But Robertson barely heard her. He was absorbed in the words that he was reading. They were words that would one day be set to music and become a great hymn of the faith, familiar to generations and generations of Christians. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. But his eyes slipped to the bottom of the page where he read, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. He could barely read the last few lines through the tears that had brimmed in his eyes. I wrote these words and I've lived these words, prone to wander, prone to leave the God I love. The woman suddenly understood. You also wrote, here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. You can offer your heart again to God, Mr. Robertson. It's not too late. And it wasn't too late for Robert Robertson. In that moment, he turned his heart back to God and walked with him the rest of his days. This is such a hope of God's grace and his love. Another part of that song reads, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Thy goodness like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And if you know someone who is wandering, trust that our loving Father will orchestrate their return to him too. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow.